Here are most commonly asked scenario-based interview questions. Along with detailed and informative answers for a junior cybersecurity analyst role. 1. Scenario. You receive an alert about suspicious activity on a critical server. What steps would you take to investigate and respond? Answer. First, I would validate the alert to confirm it is not a false positive. This involves checking logs, user activity, and any triggered signatures. Next, I would isolate the affected server to prevent further potential damage. I would analyze the logs to identify the source and method of the attack. If malware is detected, I would use anti-malware tools to remove it. I would also look for any indicators of compromised IOCs to understand the extent of the breach. After containment, I would initiate a detailed forensic analysis, document findings, and implement measures to prevent future incidents. Finally, I would restore the server to normal operations and monitor it closely for any signs of recurring issues. 2. Scenario. Owser reports a phishing email they received. How would you handle this situation? Answer. I would start by asking the user to forward the phishing email to the cybersecurity team. I would analyze the email headers and content to understand the nature of the phishing attempt. I would then update our email filters to block similar attempts in the future. I would check if any other users receive the same email and ensure they haven't fallen victim to it. If necessary, I would reset compromise credentials and conduct a scan for any malware. Educating the user and other employees on identifying and reporting phishing emails would be an essential step to prevent such incidents in the future. 3. Scenario You discover that an employee's credentials have been compromised. What actions would you take? Answer First, I would immediately disable the compromised account to prevent further unauthorized access. I would then investigate how the credentials were compromised, whether through phishing, brute force, or another method. The next step would be to perform a full scan of the affected systems for malware or any other signs of compromise. I would reset the compromised credentials and require multi-factor authentication MFA for additional security. Communicating with the employee educate them on best practices for password management and recognizing potential threats is also crucial. Finally, I would monitor for any unusual activity related to the compromised account and ensure no further breaches have occurred. 4. Scenario. Your team has detected unusual outbound traffic from a workstation. How would you proceed? Answer. I would first identify the workstation and the nature of the unusual traffic. This involves checking network logs and using network monitoring tools to pinpoint the source and destination of the traffic. If the traffic is suspected to be malicious, I would isolate the workstation from the network. I would then perform a thorough malware scan and review system logs for any signs of compromise. Analyzing the traffic patterns can help identify if data exfiltration occurred. Once the threat is contained, I would remove any detected malware, patch vulnerabilities, and restore the workstation. Finally, I would document the incident and adjust security measures to prevent similar occurrences. 5. Scenario. An application you are responsible for monitoring has a vulnerability. How do you handle it? Answer. Upon discovering the vulnerability, I would first assess its severity and potential impact. If a patch or update is available, I would apply it as soon as possible. If not, I would implement temporary mitigation measures, such as network segmentation or access controls, to limit exposure. I would also monitor for any signs of exploitation while these measures are in place. Next, I would conduct a risk assessment to understand how the vulnerability could be exploited and what data or systems are at risk. Communication with the application's development team and vendors is critical to ensure a timely and effective response. Finally, I would document the process and update security policies to mitigate similar vulnerabilities in the future. 6. Scenario A server has been infected with ransomware. What steps would you take? Answer. The first step is to isolate the infected server to prevent the ransomware from spreading to other systems. 
I would then identify the strain of ransomware and determine the scope of the infection. If backups are available, I would restore the affected data from a clean backup after ensuring the malware is completely removed. I would perform a forensic analysis to understand how the ransomware entered the system and identify any vulnerabilities that were exploited. Educating users about phishing and other attack vectors is crucial to prevent future incidents. Implementing stronger security measures, such as regular updates, endpoint protection, and backup strategies, would also be part of the remediation process. 7. Scenario You receive an alert indicating a brute force attack on your network. What is your response? Answer Upon receiving the alert, I would quickly identify the source of the attack and block the offending IP addresses to prevent further attempts. I would then check the logs to understand the extent of the attack and determine if any accounts were compromised. Implementing account lockout policies after a certain number of failed login attempts can help mitigate such attacks. I would also ensure that strong password policies and multi-factor authentication MFA are in place. Conducting a review of the affected systems for any signs of compromise is crucial. Educating users on creating strong passwords and recognizing phishing attempts is also important to enhance overall security. 8. Scenario. There's been a data breach, and sensitive information has been leaked. What steps would you take to manage the situation? Answer. First, I would immediately contain the breach by identifying and isolating the compromised systems. I would then conduct a thorough investigation to determine the cause and scope of the breach. Notifying affected parties and stakeholders promptly is crucial to maintain transparency and trust. I would work with legal and compliance teams to ensure all regulatory requirements are met. Implementing additional security measures, such as enhanced monitoring and tighter access controls, can help prevent future breaches. Communicating with affected individuals and offering support, such as credit monitoring services, is also important. Finally, conducting a post-incident review and updating security policies and procedures would help improve the organization's security posture. 9. Scenario You discover that a third-party vendor system has been compromised. What actions would you take? Answer I would first contact the vendor to understand the extent of the compromise and the potential impact on our systems. Ensuring that any data shared with the vendor is secure and has not been compromised is crucial. I would then review our connection points and data flows with the vendor to identify any vulnerabilities. Implementing additional security measures, such as limiting access or using secure communication channels, can help mitigate risks. Conducting a risk assessment and monitoring for any suspicious activity related to the vendor's compromise is also important. Communicating with internal stakeholders and updating them on the situation and any actions taken is essential. Finally, reassessing the vendor's security posture and their ability to protect our data would help. Determine if additional security requirements or changes in the vendor relationship are needed. If you people need more questions and answers like this, please check PDF version of this interview questions and answers. That PDF contains 35 most commonly asked scenario-based interview questions and answers in junior cybersecurity analyst interviews. I have provided a preview also, so you people can check preview of this PDF before downloading. Please check description of this video for a link to download. Here are most commonly asked real-world problem-solving related interview questions and detailed answers for a junior cybersecurity analyst role. 1. Problem. You receive an alert about a possible phishing email in the company inbox. How do you proceed? Answer. First, I would verify the email's origin and content. I would check for red flags like mismatched URLs, suspicious attachments, and requests for sensitive information. Next, I would notify the relevant personnel and isolate the email. If confirmed as phishing, I would block the sender, delete the email, and update the company's email filters to prevent future attempts. 
Finally, I would educate the employees about recognizing phishing emails. 2. Problem. A user reports their computer is acting strangely and running slow. What steps do you take? Answer. I would start by isolating the machine from the network to prevent any potential spread of malware. Then, I would perform a thorough scan for malware and check for unauthorized processes or applications. I would also review system logs for unusual activity. If malware is detected, I would follow the company's incident response procedures to remove it and restore the system. I would also analyze how the malware entered to prevent future incidents. 3. Problem. The company website has been defaced. What immediate actions do you take? Answer. First, I would take the website offline to prevent further damage and user exposure. Then, I would check for any signs of unauthorized access and review logs to understand how the attack occurred. I would restore the website from a clean backup and patch any vulnerabilities exploited by the attacker. After securing the website, I would conduct a post-incident analysis to improve defenses and document findings. 4. Problem. You detect unusual outbound traffic from an internal server. How do you handle this situation? Answer. I would begin by isolating the server to stop the suspicious traffic. Next, I would analyze the traffic to understand its nature and potential destination. I would check for any unauthorized processes or malware on the server. If a compromise is confirmed, I would follow incident response procedures. To remove the threat, investigate the root cause, and restore the server. I would also monitor the network for any further signs of compromise. 5. Problem. During a routine audit, you discover that some users have excessive permissions. What steps do you take? Answer. I would document the findings and identify which permissions are excessive. Then, I would review the access control policies and consult with the relevant department heads to determine the appropriate levels of access. I would adjust the permissions accordingly and implement a regular review process to ensure compliance with the principle of least privilege. 6. Problem. You notice an employee is accessing sensitive data outside of their normal working hours. What is your approach? Answer. I would first verify if there is a legitimate reason for the access, such as a change in work schedule or a special project. If not, I would alert the security team and conduct a thorough investigation. This would include reviewing access logs, interviewing the employee, and determining if any data was compromised. If malicious intent is found, I would follow the company's disciplinary and incident response procedures. 7. Problem. You find a vulnerability in the company's software. How do you address it? Answer. I would document the vulnerability and assess its potential impact. Next. I would report the finding to the development team and work with them to prioritize and implement a fix. I would also test the patch to ensure it resolves the issue without introducing new problems. Finally, I would update the vulnerability management system and communicate the resolution to relevant stakeholders. 8. Problem. A remote worker reports they cannot access the company's VPN. How do you troubleshoot this? Answer. I would first verify the user's credentials and ensure their account is active. Next, I would check if there are any issues with the VPN server or network. I would also verify the user's internet connection and any firewall settings that might be blocking the VPN. If the issue persists, I would escalate to the network team for further investigation and resolution. 9. Problem. You detect a brute force attack on the company's login portal. What are your immediate actions? Answer. I would implement account lockout policies to prevent further attempts and increase monitoring of login attempts. I would review the source of the attack and block the IP addresses if necessary. Additionally, I would notify the affected users to reset their passwords and enable multi-factor authentication. I would also analyze the attack patterns to improve the security of the login portal. 10. Problem. You receive a report of a lost company laptop. What steps do you take to secure the data? Answer. 
I would first attempt to remotely lock or wipe the device if such capabilities are available. Then, I would review what data was on the laptop and determine if any sensitive information was exposed. I would change passwords and revoke access for accounts used on the laptop. I would also notify the relevant parties and follow the company's incident response and reporting procedures. If you people need more questions and answers like this, please check PDF version of this interview questions and answers. That PDF contains 50 most commonly asked real-world problem solving. Related interview questions and answers in junior cybersecurity analyst interviews. I have provided a preview also, so you people can check preview of this PDF before downloading. Please check description of this video for a link to download. Here are most commonly asked behavioral-based interview questions. For a junior cybersecurity analyst role, along with detailed and informative answers. 1. Can you describe a time when you identified a security threat and how you responded to it? Answer. During an internship, I noticed unusual network activity that indicated a potential brute force attack. I immediately reported it to my supervisor and started analyzing the logs. I identified the source IP addresses and implemented temporary firewall rules to block those IPs while we investigated further. We then strengthened our password policies and implemented multi-factor authentication to prevent future attacks. 2. Tell me about a time when you had to work under pressure in a cybersecurity context. Answer. During a university project, our team had to present a cybersecurity solution within a tight deadline. Midway through, we encountered a significant vulnerability in our proposed system. I stayed calm, reassigned tasks, and worked late nights to develop a patch. We successfully fixed the issue and presented on time, receiving positive feedback for our comprehensive solution. 3. Describe an instance where you had to explain a complex security issue to a non-technical person. Answer. In a previous role, I had to explain to the HR department why they needed to be cautious about phishing emails. I used simple analogies, comparing phishing emails to real-life scams, and emphasizing the importance of not sharing sensitive information. This approach helped them understand the risks and the measures they should take to stay safe. 4. Can you provide an example of when you had to learn a new cybersecurity tool quickly? Answer. During my internship, our team started using a new SIEM tool. I took the initiative to attend webinars and read documentation outside of work hours. Within a week, I was proficient enough to create dashboards and alerts, which impressed my supervisor and helped our team respond to incidents more efficiently. 5. Describe a time when you had to prioritize multiple security tasks. Answer. In a previous project, I was juggling tasks like patch management, vulnerability scanning, and incident response. I assessed the potential impact and urgency of each task, prioritizing critical patches and immediate threats first. By organizing my workload and delegating some tasks, I ensured all high-priority issues were addressed promptly without neglecting ongoing responsibilities. 6. Can you recall a situation where your security recommendation was initially rejected? How did you handle it? Answer. I once recommended implementing a stricter password policy, but it was initially rejected due to concerns about user inconvenience. I gathered data on the risks of weak passwords and presented it to the decision makers. Highlighting recent breaches caused by poor password practices. My persistence paid off, and the policy was eventually adopted. If you people need more questions and answers like this, please check PDF version of this interview questions and answers. That PDF contains 50 most commonly asked behavioral-based interview questions and answers in junior cybersecurity analyst interviews. I have provided a preview also so you people can check preview of this PDF before downloading. Please check description of this video for a link to download. Here are most commonly asked technical-based interview questions. In junior cybersecurity analyst interviews, along with detailed and informative answers. 
1. What is the difference between symmetric and asymmetric encryption? Answer, symmetric encryption uses the same key for both encryption and decryption, making it faster but less secure if the key is compromised. Asymmetric encryption uses a pair of keys, a public key for encryption and a private key for decryption, providing enhanced security at the cost of slower performance. 2. What is a firewall and how does it work? Answer, a firewall is a network security device that monitors and controls incoming and outgoing network traffic based on predetermined security rules. It works by filtering traffic, blocking unauthorized access, and allowing only permitted communications. 3. Explain the concept of a VPN and its importance. Answer, a virtual private network VPN creates a secure, encrypted connection over a less secure network, such as the Internet. It ensures privacy and protection of data by masking IP addresses and encrypting data transfers, which is crucial for secure communication in remote working environments. 4. What are the different types of malware? Answer. Types of malware include viruses, worms, trojans, ransomware, spyware, adware, and rootkits. Each type has distinct characteristics and infection methods, such as self-replication, data encryption for ransom, or unauthorized access to system resources. 5. Describe the process of a phishing attack. Answer. Phishing attacks involve fraudulent emails or messages that appear to come from a legitimate source. These messages trick recipients into providing sensitive information, such as login credentials or financial details, or clicking on malicious links that install malware. 6. What is a zero-day exploit? Answer. A zero-day exploit targets a software vulnerability that is unknown to the software vendor and has no patch available. Attackers exploit this vulnerability before it is discovered and fixed, making it highly dangerous and effective. 7. How does SSL or TLS work? Answer. SSL Secure Sockets Layer and TLS Transport Layer Security are protocols that encrypt data transmitted over the Internet. They work by establishing a secure handshake between the client and server, exchanging keys, and creating an encrypted session to protect data integrity and privacy. 8. What is Intrusion Detection and Prevention Systems IDPS? Answer. IDPS are security systems that monitor network or system activities for malicious actions or policy violations. Intrusion Detection Systems IDS detect and alert on suspicious activities, while Intrusion Prevention Systems IPS take proactive measures to block or prevent such activities. If you people need more questions and answers like this, please check PDF version of this interview questions and answers. That PDF contains 50 most commonly asked technical-based interview questions and answers in junior cybersecurity analyst interviews. I have provided a preview also, so you people can check preview of this PDF before downloading. Please check description of this video for a link to download. System design related questions may be less common for freshers or entry level roles, but can still appear, particularly if the role involves designing or implementing security systems. Here are system design related interview questions, along with detailed and informative answers tailored for a junior cybersecurity analyst position. 1. How would you design a secure login system? Answer. A secure login system involves multiple layers of security to protect user credentials and prevent unauthorized access. Key components include a. User authentication. Use strong, salted hashing algorithms like bcrypt for storing passwords. b. Multi-factor authentication MFA. Implement MFA to add an extra layer of security. c. Rate limiting. I meant rate limiting to prevent brute force attacks. D. Session management. Use secure, HTTP only, and same site cookies to manage sessions. E. Encryption. Ensure data in transit is encrypted using TLS.
2. How do you design a system to detect and prevent DDoS attacks? Answer System designed to detect and prevent DDoS attacks includes the following components. A. Traffic analysis. Monitor network traffic for unusual patterns using intrusion detection systems IDS. B. Rate limiting. We meant rate limiting on critical resources to mitigate the impact. C. Load balancing. Use load balancers to distribute traffic evenly across servers. D. Firewalls and DDoS protection services. Deploy web application firewalls WF and use DDoS protection services like Cloudflare or AWS Shield. E. Anomaly detection. Employ machine learning algorithms to detect and respond to abnormal traffic patterns. 3. How do you design a system for logging and monitoring security events? Answer. A system for logging and monitoring security events includes A. Centralized logging. Use a centralized logging system like ELK, Stack, or Splunk. B. Real-time monitoring. Implement real-time monitoring tools like SIEM security information and event management. C. Alerting. Set up alerts for suspicious activities. D. Log analysis. Use automated tools for log analysis to detect patterns and anomalies. E. Retention policies. Define log retention policies to comply with legal requirements. 4. Describe how you would design a secure email system. Answer. A secure email system includes. A. Encryption. Use end-to-end -end encryption for example, PGP or S or MIME for email content. B. Authentication. Implement SPF, DKIM, and DMRC to verify sender identity. C. Secure communication. Use TLS to encrypt email communications. D. Anti-phishing measures. Deploy anti-phishing tools and train users to recognize phishing attempts. E. Spam filtering. Use advanced spam filters to detect and block malicious emails. If you people need more questions and answers like this, please check PDF version of this interview questions and answers. That PDF contains 50 system design related interview questions and answers for junior cybersecurity analyst interviews. I have provided a preview also, so you people can check preview of this PDF before downloading. Please check description of this video for a link to download. For more exciting tips, tricks and more importantly, for valuable insights of interviews, please share, like, and subscribe to my channel. It has a lot of valuable information about various insights of interviews. It has a wide range of real-world portfolio projects of various technologies for interviews, and it has wide range of most asked interview questions and answers of various technologies like data science, SAP, AWS, DevOps, and full-stack web development, and more. That will be useful during interviews. It has a wide range of most asked interview questions and answers and real-world portfolio projects of various technologies for freshers. For two to three years, experienced candidates, and for five or above years, experienced candidates to test their skills by knowing most. Asked interview questions and make themselves ready for interviews.